touch me. Man goes to work, man comes home, man drinks, man, woman fight. I mean, there was a lot of fighting that we saw when we were children. Well, every weekend we'd go camping. Sometimes the adults would go into town and leave us with, you know, the families that lived closer. And it was their uh, older teenage son that uh, molested me when I was about four or five. It continued. And um, what he had said to get me not to tell was, you know how your dad is. If he finds out, you know what he's gonna do to you. And that's what he had told me. My parents got divorced when I was about eight. Well, about nine, I started smoking cigarettes. And uh, by 11, I was dabbling into drugs. I just spiraled down, you know? I was drinking and uh, doing acid. I tried crystal meth, coke, and I just, in my mind, I would live to die. I just didn't care. I just sliced myself. Just, I hurt so bad, I think, because of molestation when I was younger that, um, I just didn't feel worthy in a sense. Julie ran to the streets, broken. She ended up with two kids from failed relationships. I ended up homeless, lost all my stuff, ended up on the streets with the two kids. And um, during that time, I mean, I was drinking and doing whatever. I just didn't care, you know. I just thought if I die, the kids will be so much better. On the edge of suicide, a man on the street handed Julie a Bible. When we were younger, we went to Catholic church, and so we weren't allowed to have Bibles. You know, so here's my first Bible. I was like, wow, this is great, you know? And eventually, reading the Word, I came to this um, this point where I was either, I was gonna die or I was gonna live. And from reading the Bible, um, I made a decision to live. My second child, she woke me up. She says, God talked to me. I never discussed God with her. And she says, he talked to me. And Mama, and he says, everything's gonna be all right. And so, that was, that was the point. When you, when you beat yourself up so much, and then you have this little one telling you that, and you're just looking for hope, you know? It just meant a lot. So I kind of, um, I got it together, and um, I got off the streets. I was a single mom for so long, and I guess I was seeking out this father figure for the kids. I guess it was in my mind, it just felt like they were missing something, like I couldn't do enough. I felt I needed a protector. I guess that makes sense. Wanting a protector, Julie married and delivered her third child. The man became a monster, and her reality became a nightmare. He pushed me away from Christianity. I allowed him to. He destroyed my family. He was so abusive. I felt like a prisoner. Me and the kids were sleeping in my room, and he had just gone off, and um, he was leaving again, and um, we were scared, and we were all huddled up in my bedroom. And he comes banging on the house, and the kids, don't answer, don't answer, and I'm like, I have to, he's not gonna go away. I answer the door, and he's got a knife in his hand, and he's got blood, and apparently he had just stabbed somebody. And he wanted me to give him a ride out of town. And I didn't want to. No, no, no. And I started driving, and he was in and out, and he'd come to, you know, come to, wake up, and he'd get really angry, and he's and I'm like, please just put the knife down, just put the knife down. And I just said, just God in my in my head, just God, please protect us. And I made it probably about 30 minutes out of town. And 
then I finally was able to say, listen, I'm almost out of gas. I gotta get back to the kids. You know, they're probably scared. Uh, he didn't care about any of that. He got out of the car and I just started crying and I'm driving as fast as I can. I'm looking in my rear view mirror thinking he's still behind me. I got a call in the middle of the night that he stole the car, drove down the highway at 85 and ran into a tree and died. It was me or him that night and I'm just glad that um, I was there for my babies. Julie started to pick up the pieces of her broken life. And years later, Julie met Brian. And I saw in him just such a, a common bond, such a common desire to have a good life and to have a family and everything I dreamed about, you know, and that I've, I sought after and the wrong people. Both Brian and Julie wanted to start their family, so they married. I found a Bible in the house and I started picking it up and started reading. I mean, I think I was, I was reading almost daily, you know, just trying to get the word in. And we decided to drive down to Tennessee to um, visit my dad and my family. We went to church. And when we went there, they felt like the sermon was speaking to us. And we both just wanted to get up and give our lives, you know, but we were both so nervous and scared because it was all new again, you know? Moved by the Holy Spirit, Julie and Brian returned to that church. And boy, as soon as we got to church, it's like we both had the calling and just, we went up at the same time, which was pretty amazing. Gave our lives to the Lord and, and um, you know, started over. <laughs> Going through what I did, it's like you always have this weight right here on your back. And your life is restricted. Um, you, you just have no freedom. And I can tell you when I made the decision that literally, physically, I just, this peace came over me. You know, um, it's amazing. I thank God that I can love 